meeting to order. Please do rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please, Ms. Kovacs, you're going to be me tonight, so you're going to call the roll call. Sure. Um, Tim Mettinger. Here. Lisa Collins. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. Tom Cruise. Here. Alex Ockrey. Here. Cheryl Hancock. She is excused. Anita Jagosinski. She is excused. And Kate Mayer. I'm here. With um, this many of us together, we do have a quorum. So I will move on to approval of the agenda. I note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to this agenda? I would entertain a motion if there are no changes for approval. So moved. Thank you, Gary. Second. Thank you, Tim. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying no. The motion to approve the published agenda has passed. At this point, we have public participation. I'm looking over the crowd, and I'm going to ask you, is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that you would have a five-minute limit. Are there any people out there in my vast audience that want to come forward to speak. With that said, we have some recognitions going on, and these are always some of our favorite parts um, of what we do in our district. We have so many people that need to be recognized. So the first one is, um, I just like saying this, the pork feed. <laughs> this is a good thing. Okay, all right, just hold on, folks. There's something up here that we just... It's all right, it's all good. <laughs> while, you're, while you're putting that up there, um, there are so many people that take part in the pork feed, from the people who buy to the people who volunteer, and thank you all for that. I looked at pictures of my administrators, our administrators, <laughs> serving up the serving up the pork it was a good thing well good evening everyone T tonight is always a special time for us as a community uh, when we get to talk a little bit about our annual pork feed and um, and welcome to our guests uh, to this evening mr. Miller and I will be presenting a PowerPoint sharing a lot of the good news from so much work that went into um, uh, making sure that this event went off very well, and you'll see that it did. <clears throat> the, the pork feed really is organized and led by the district leadership team, which is made up of our administrators throughout the school district and our supervisors. Also, there are um, several people behind the scenes, and just so I don't forget it later, I just want to make sure that I recognize Ms. Shirley Rozak, who is the um, the assistant to Mr. Jay Clark, um, and Shirley does a lot of planning and organizing for this event behind the scenes. So thank you, Shirley. We couldn't do this um, without our major sponsors, and you can see the list, Ultra, Federal Credit Union, Associated Bank, Community Credit Union, Firefighters Credit Union, River Bank, and Seven Bridges Bank. So we thank them for, for their donation and their sponsor to this event. And again, you can see how we, um, how we publicize and um, allow them to, uh, because of their sponsorship, 
um, advertiser put out uh, to our community knowing of their strong support for the school district and this specific event. This has always been associated uh, for some time with our homecoming festivities, and uh, that was the case this year, and we, we hosted on Alaska. And part of that is we, we make a point of reaching out and welcoming not only our community, but the community in which we are playing that evening. And I know that there were a number of on Alaska folks that, that came through. And we also, it's a special uh, time where we also invite after the game that opposing football team, in this case on Alaska, to um, share a meal with our players and so that's always a special for that to occur too <clears throat> there are some here's some candid photos uh, throughout the evening and some of you may want to look for yourself or <laughs> in the photos i would have to say this is uh, uh, this was the first time that i was not able to be part of this and certainly i missed it a great deal and uh but always a special time <clears throat> this is again through you come in and get your food and then you, you come out and um, sit at tables uh, within under the tent had some displays I know our foundation area foundation was there as well <clears throat> some additional photos we'll have uh, more to say about our band a little bit later in a presentation, but this has been such a welcome addition to the event um, to have music playing and uh, rather loud. Thank <laughs> you to Ms. Jensen back there, but I tell you, it just is a perfect, perfect fit for this event. And um, so it works out really well. So, and again, we'll, we have a special recognition in just a little bit for our band. We try to serve as best as we can out even to the bleachers and take food out to folks in the bleachers. <clears throat> and again, we want to just recognize some other contributors to making this such a successful event. <clears throat> also, as I said, that this was organized and really put on by our leadership team. So not only do they work the event, plan, and do all the planning, but we have other volunteers that um, join us as well. See Mr. Clark up there, being very careful. There's a good shot of several of the people there that <laughs> evening. I'll let Mr. Miller talk a little bit about the financial part of the evening. The pork feed was also very successful financially. Um, this year we even outdid last year's uh, totals. These numbers represent the amount of the uh, donation that will be um, handed out tonight. It was about a $850 increase over last year. The pork feed has been uh, going on for 13 years, and the total uh, contributed um, is just under $65,000, with um, the majority of that money going to the Home and Area Foundation, uh, which gives grants to teachers in the classroom and other, other benefactors of, of, that, of those monies. And you'll hear, hear more, a little more about that tonight. <coughs> and with that, we'd like to we're going to do a few presentations of some checks, and I'm just going to show you in advance before we call folks up. Um, we have uh, part of this, we've always made a contribution to the high school athletics department, and I don't know, when we start to call people up, I'm not sure that we're going to have a representative of that group because we have winter code meetings going on uh, tonight. So we're already preparing for the winter. Uh, season and the crew is over there so um, so we but we'd be happy we'll mention them acknowledge them again we also this works out perfectly because we also have a presentation by our FFA this evening so we know that there are people that will gladly accept the donation for our FFA and we'll be presenting two checks 
to the Home and Area Foundation. And again, for the foundation to utilize in specifically two ways. Um, one, the Viking Fund, and I know President Ruth Schulze is here this evening, and she's going to talk more about those specifics of how the money is utilized. And part of that presentation also will be involving our marching band and uh, directing some resource, some money there. So, and Ms. Schulze will be speaking more about that um, in just a few minutes. So again, thank you to everybody for making it such a successful pork feed this year. We look forward to next year as well and improving upon it even more so. So at this time, we're just going to step around. I'm going to grab a, uh, one of the hand mics. And I think, Ms. Mayor, if you would come around too, hopefully this, is it working out there yet? Okay. As I mentioned, the first check that we're going to um, present tonight is to our high school athletics department for $250. And I believe, I'm just going to go ahead and keep that and, <laughs> and we'll, we'll get it to them. Have that in good hands, right? Right. If I could have some representatives of our FFA come up, please, to accept the check. <clears throat> there you go. Thank you very much. Do you want to, I, I didn't, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna take several pictures here. I didn't prepare you for this. Are you, <laughs> are you able to say maybe some ways that you might use? Uh, the, the first thing that comes to mind is our national convention trip that we're leaving on tomorrow. This will definitely help with the funds for that. And um, just some of the things that we do throughout the year in the community. Oh, great. Thank you. We're going to take some photos. I'm going to have Ms. Mayor. <laughs> I'm going to have you take a seat, but we may call you back up for a group photo in just a little bit, okay? I'm going to now call for Ms. Ruth Schulze, who's our current president of our Home and Area Foundation. I'm going to present two checks to Ruth. Uh, one is in the amount of $2,685.78. The other is in the amount of $3,000. And she's going to talk a little bit about uh, where those monies are directed towards, and then also give her the mic to talk a little bit more about the foundation in general and the good work that that organization does. But maybe we want to take some photos first. Well, congratulations on behalf of the Holman Area Foundation, and thank you for including the Holman Area Foundation with the pork feed. Um, when you see the totals, that's pretty amazing. That's awesome. And the Holman Foundation is happy to be your investor in that money. And last year, with the Viking Fund for Excellence in Education, we gave $5,574.33. A lot of it went for classroom supplies, classroom books. Um, some of it helped the lettuce production at the high school with FFA. Um, safety goggles in the science rooms and different field trips and whatever needs come about that the teachers apply for the grants. And we'll be looking at this year's grants already at our November meeting. So that third Thursday of November, we'll be anticipating discussing the grants that have now been proposed. And the foundation is a proud sponsor of the Got Talent program coming up November 7th and the Random Acts of Kindness as well. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But 3000 for the band. Where's my band people? Come on up. 
you know, last Monday night was your band concert. I was blown away. And I said to Mr. Matheson, our pep band never sounded like that. So as an alumni of band, alumni of the school district of Holman, and a retired teacher, I'm very honored to say $3,000 will be a kickoff event for the band uniforms. We have a tremendous music program and kind of a good problem. We have 50 <laughs> kids coming in the band by fall, is what right? The eighth graders coming over into high school. And so we need more uniforms. And that's not a simple task to do. And so these ladies, along with their music booster club, are working hard. And we're happy to be a sponsor and help any way we can for the foundation to kick off and house the funds and distribute and whatever means we can do. And I know you have fundraisers coming up. And best of luck. But job well done. Thank you. Well, we have, um, in 2003, the, the current uniforms that we have were purchased, and they purchased 100 of them. Next year, we're hoping to march 130 plus. Oh. So um, we definitely have a, a need. It's a big investment, um, so we're working hard to um, continue to be a good looking <coughs> representative <coughs> and ambassador of our community. So thank you so much. Thank you. You want a picture right here, too? I can just have two more quick minutes. Um, I went to a leadership meeting, I don't remember when, a week ago, two weeks ago, and presented to the administrators a check from the foundation for the random acts of kindness for $3,500. So it's $500 per administrator for you to use as you need within your school. And I have the checks tonight so that you're responsible for your accounts. But a few of you have to go sign yet. So I know a few of you signed and got your paperwork <laughs> in order. And some of you need to stop over at the Seven Bridges Bank. It's just beyond Prairie View, not too far around the corner, and sign. But I want to give you your checks tonight. So Sue, for the 4K. Rachel, for Evergreen. I don't see. Oh, Perry, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Old habits are hard to die. <laughs> Thanks. And I'm like, And Viking, Bonnie. Middle school, I am. You maybe with this. Right. I'm going to squeeze it again. You already, most of you had a chance to do that. You had a great picture in the paper, by the way. So squeeze in. Thank you, everybody. So Cheryl is not here tonight, as you've noticed, and here am I. I'm like a newbie on this, but I know what Cheryl does when things like this happen. She speaks to the people who have volunteered, so I'm looking at my administrators who are out there tonight. Um, I saw all of your faces at the pork feed. Um, I'm looking at Ruth, who does so much for this district. These checks that go to the arts, which 
can change the life of kids. That um, it's just so important. Um, sometimes I get emotional. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Gary, don't say anything. <laughs> But I am so proud of us and what we do, what our people do, what our volunteers do, what our citizens do. Thank you so very much, all of you. This was a great five minutes. So we're moving on to District Administrator's Report, and I'm going to turn this over to you, Dr. Carlson. I have nothing further to add to what is already in your board packet unless you have questions. I would just, again, highlight the happenings reports that I often remind. It's just a great way for board members to keep up on the many things that are occurring in our new buildings. Other than that, any questions? Okay, thank Sweet you. Sweet and simple. That's okay. Anita would be proud of you because she likes to keep things rolling, right? Um, <laughs> we'll move on to reports and discussions right now. Um, our first item is 10.1 FFA report. Yes, and, Dr. Carlson. and I'm sorry. I, I hope I didn't mess up uh, what you had up on the screen. Are you good to go? <laughs> so welcome uh, and glad to have you this evening for sharing with, with all of us a little bit about our FFA program. Thank you for having me. I'm Anna Kaufman Schwartz. I'm our Holman High School FFA president this year. I've been an office an officer in the FFA for three years now, and I've been involved for four. Um, just a little bit about our program. Uh, the National FFA organization was chartered in 1928. Holman High School got its chapter ten years later on July 15, 1938 which means that we've been an organization in the Holman School District for 76 years now. Um, agricultural education is composed of three interrelated components, FFA, which is our organization and mostly out of the classroom, classroom instruction, which is uh, your agriculture classes like animal health, wildlife, animal science, greenhouse, and things like that, and the supervised agriculture experience, which is we call an SAE, it's a project that students take on outside the normal classroom activities and FFA time, which can range from livestock showing to landscaping to managing the high school's hydroponic greenhouse. FFA is a year-round activity. We have activities every month of the year, be it concessions or contests or just summer team building activities. We like to get together all the time. Uh, memberships available for 7th to 12th grade students, but we currently only have agricultural education classes available at the high school level. Some of our activities that we do throughout the year, we have our national convention trip, which we actually leave on tomorrow morning. We participate at national convention and workshops. There's a college fair, a career expo, and we always take several tours on the way there. This year it's in Louisville, and we'll be there until Saturday. We also have um, concessions, which is our main fundraiser for the year. We don't have to sell fruit or a cookie dough or anything like that, like um, a lot of other ch FFA chapters do, because we're fortunate enough to have our concession stand at the high school. We do our career development events at the district and state levels, which we have teams like poultry, dairy foods, floriculture, agriculture mechanics, livestock, horse, meat identification and evaluation, and wildlife, and many more. If it's anything that's agricultural or um, ecologically related, we probably have a team for it. We do a website competition every year, which we always do fairly well in. I think we've placed top three in the state for the last few years. Fire Conference is just a leadership conference for our younger members, middle school to ninth grade. And Sectional Leadership Workshop is a leadership workshop for any member that would like to go. Some more of the activities that we do, we have local district, sectional, and state speaking contests, which include FFA Creed, in which um, ninth grade members memorize the FFA Creed and recite it and answer questions about it for a panel of judges. Extemporaneous speaking, in which uh, a member receives three different topics the day that they get to the competition. They have to pick one and write a speech on it using only resources they've brought along with them, and then they have half an hour to prepare and present it. Prepared speaking, where they write their own speech and bring it to the contest memorized. 
job interview, which is conducted just like a regular job interview and gives a lot of real life experience for anybody that would like to go into the working world right after high school. Our parliamentary procedure contest, our team is pictured there from last year with their sectional award. We have placed top three in the state for the last three years in parliamentary procedure. The discussion meet, which is a debate contest, and quiz bowl, which is for our middle school members. We also participate in state FFA convention in June. We are at eighth grade orientation with all the other high school organizations. We send two members to Dale Carnegie training every year. We participate in the scrapbook competition at the state level. We go to a Badger hockey game every year, which is hosted by UW-Madison's collegiate FFA chapter. We do a steak and bean feed, which is to encourage our members to keep their grades up because if your GPA goes up, you get to eat steak, and if it goes down, you get beans, and everyone <laughs> makes fun of you. <laughs> and uh, we also have uh, showmen in the lacrosse interstate fair every year. We also do an officer training trip to Green Lake every year. Our eight to nine officers go and we spend the year, or we spend the week planning the year and doing team building activities and just getting to know each other a little better so we can work together better as a team to lead our chapter throughout the year. We have an agri-science fair competition where people can do projects on anything related to agriculture, which often stems from one of Mr. King's classes. People will take their final project and just take it that step farther and take it onto a competition. We have a fall classroom work day for the officers just to get ready for the year. We set up our bulletin board displays and things like that. We have an officer mid-year retreat where we go in January and plan the second half of the year in greater detail. We do empty bowls in collaboration with the high school art club, which is a charity event that we do to raise money for a local cause. We have our FFA school bulletin board displays around the entire high school. We have monthly meetings and monthly officer meetings. We do a Marshfield invita Invitational Parliamentary Procedure Contest, which is just a little tune-up before our regular season. It usually takes place about a month before the regular season. Unfortunately, this year it's only about two days before the real competition because it's late. And uh, we do a high school, or we do a, a pancake breakfast at the high school rodeo every year in August. We also participate in a 360 leadership workshop every year. and. Um, the picture here is from National FFA Week last year. Every year we do a cinnamon roll run to local farmers. We get to school at about 5 a.m. and we bake cinnamon rolls that are pre-made and we bring them out to the farmers while they're still hot. We usually catch them while doing morning chores. It's just something we like to do to show our appreciation for the community members that support us. We have members that participate in state FFA's talent and state choir and band this year. We participate in the three-star leadership competition at the state level, which is usually for presidents and vice presidents. We are the dance managers at the state FFA convention, so we organize all that, and it's always a lot of fun. We usually have a theme and everyone dresses up. We have our monthly Wear Your FFA T-shirt to School Day, which is the 19th and 28th in, order, in honor of the uh, year that FFA was founded, 1928. We have a float in the homecoming parade every year. This year we had a King Kong themed one with the Empire State of Mind. We do care packages for our graduated members. We usually send them out around finals time just to remember, just to remind them that we're thinking of them and even though they're probably miserable right now because it's finals week and their first year of college that it, things aren't really so bad. We have a halftime conference which we usually send two of our officers to. And we donate or volunteer at a lot of different community organizations, and we help out at the elementary schools. Um, this picture is from last year, uh, National Ag Day. Two of our members went to Viking Elementary and are reading the Farm Bureau's Book of the Year to the elementary schoolers, and we always take that as an opportunity to teach them about agriculture, where their food comes from, so that they don't think that it just grows in the supermarket. <laughs> These are just some of our summer highlights that we've already done this year. We had state convention in which we placed second at, parliament, at the parliamentary procedure contest. One of our members received her state degree. It was our president last year. And the state degree is only awarded to the top 2% of FFA members. So she has been very involved and we're really proud of her. Um, we also placed third in the state for the national chapter award and placed top three in both student and chapter development. We had our officer training trip, which was a lot of fun. Our nine officers went to Green Lake and spent the week planning and getting to know each other. Our farm to school um, 
project has been working hard throughout the summer. We have served sweet corn, lettuce, chicken, and potatoes so far this year at the school lunches just from our program. We had several exhibitors at the La Crosse County Fair, and uh, we had a member at the state FFA band at both the state fair and the state convention. And if you're ever interested in looking at what we're doing right now, we have our www.homelandffa.org website, which will just update you on what's going on. Thanks for having us. Are there any questions? No. <laughs> you speak very well. Thank you. You are honor. You are very good for your organization. Thank you for this. Thanks. That's uh, what our organization does. When I was a freshman, I got up in front of Mr. King's class, and my face turned all beet red, and I stuttered the whole time all the way through my presentation. <laughs> Not this time. No. Other, other board member comments? Um, Anna or Anna? Tell Anna. Me. Anna. So um, I don't know where to begin with your organization every time um, it's presented. Our socks are knocked off. Can you talk a little bit about Mr. Roger here next to you and what he does and what he has given? Because I know that, I know he's kind of our local treasure, but I, I want citizens, well, there might be two or three of them that listen to the videos of these school board meetings. I want them to know how unique this program is and what he has brought to you and how, I mean, obviously I agree with Tom, your speaking abilities are things that need to be um, supported. That's what teachers do and that's what you need to be successful and you were brilliant tonight. <clears throat> You're welcome. Um. I don't know where to begin when it comes to what Mr. King gives to our organization because he pretty much uh, And he's lives really uncomfortable with this right now, but that's okay. <laughs> he, he pretty much lives, eats, and breathes FFA, and I would know better than most. He's actually given me an opportunity to come back to Holman for my senior year and participate in our organization and be the president because I, uh, I had moved last year with my family, and he gave me the opportunity to come back, and he and Mrs. King were welcoming enough to bring me into their home and allow me to stay with them kind of like a foreign exchange student for the year so that I could participate in this organization. Um, him and Mr. King, or Mrs. King, are at the school on days where we have concessions, probably from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m., twice a week, three times a week. They help the students see their potential. They invite students into FFA that think that it's just for farmers or that it's not for them, and they make them realize the kinds of things that they can accomplish with our organization. Um, I've seen students, there was one who had never set foot on a farm, and she ended up starting the hydroponic greenhouse at the high school and kind of kicking off our farm to school uh, program with our FFA and just some of the things that our organization does because Mr. King tells us that it's possible. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, I want you to know that we so appreciate both of you, what you do. Um, and what you do has a great scientific future. You're, you're raising and breeding students that are going to take care of our planet. That's, that's how I look at it. I'm sure you instill that in them. But you're also creating people who speak so well. I'm so grateful for both of you. Um, and the time you put in and having to come to a board meeting late at night, after hours, when you have homework, and you have homework. <laughs> um, thank you so much for that. The cinnamon, cinnamon roll thing, by the way. I wish I was a farmer because I would love to be out there and get one of those hot, warm cinnamon rolls. So thank you so very much. Just curious, what are, you, what are your plans for the future? Um, I'm hoping to attend UW-Madison for animal science next year. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. <laughs> yes, I know. Holman <laughs> is lucky. Uh, we're going to move on to item under reports and discussion, 10-2, <coughs> and Mr. Miller. I see that you have the next two items. 
with lots of figures and such. It's tough to follow uh, such a great presentation like I know, that. It's well tough, done, isn't really it? Yeah. It, with with such uh, exciting uh, topics here of, as numbers. Good um, luck with that. That's right. <laughs> I know. Uh, I can tell you that um, I would have worked really hard to get my GPA up if if that was the case. I could earn steak for, uh, for <laughs> I know. avoid beans. Steak or beans. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Well, I'm sure your report is going to be full of steak. <laughs> Let's hope so. Thank you. Um, the, this is the time of year that we uh, present the original budget, and the, uh, the budget includes the um, two prior two years audited figures. Uh, you'll be happy to hear I'm not going to go through all the numbers tonight, but I will explain what the changes are. Um, column D, and this is the proposed budget, which was approved at the uh, annual meeting, and going to now the original budget is comes after the receipt of information from the uh, third Friday September uh, enrollment counts and all the uh, DPI state figures come out so um, the revenues at least are are um, pretty well set at this point um, rather than go into all the line items um, I just point out a couple of things that are in your in your packets there's a um, budget memo from dr. Carlson which describes uh, a lot of the background of the changes between the proposed budget and the original budget. Uh, you'll have that to, to review. As well as a um, budget memo spreadsheet, the two main categories of changes are online. The first is online one, and they're identified in, in red. Um, there was a, a change, not a large change, but the equalized aid in tax levy. Again, that was based on estimates of enrollments, and now they're, now they're official. The other categories um, have to do with uh, updates to uh, staffing requirements that are detailed there and again I'll leave that to you to, to look at in detail and if you have any questions um, the <coughs> motion before you tonight will be to um, will be to approve this and then it will be published in the paper leading that really leads right into the um, the tax levy approval but before that if there's any any specific questions on that I could take those at this time. Any okay. questions, comments? It just, I think one of the yeah. one of the challenges as I look at the uh, the uh, the budget memo spreadsheet, and I think it's it, it's kind of a growing school district challenge. Is as we look at it, the revenue sources are exceeded by some of the expenditures for staffing and. Obviously, I think it's important that we do those staffing changes, but in a long range, as that continues to outpace, it's because I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, we're growing at a faster rate that it takes us several years for that FTE count correct. to actually find that revenue. So as people look at that, just to clarify that we do get revenue with that increased FTE count, but it takes a couple of years to catch up. So it's kind of that continued challenge of a growing school district. but. Right. I think right. a lot of school districts would like to have this problem because they're facing <laughs> opposite issues. Yes. So it's a good news, bad news story, but mostly good news. So. Correct. And, and one thing I might mention, and, and Dr. Carlson has probably said, is the uh, the items on the budget memo that are identified as one one time. Those are, if you want to think of those as contingencies that can be pulled back in in cases where where it's needed, tighter and tighter budget. Yeah, the one time, if nothing else, helps us as we go into the next budget cycle. Uh, providing us a little bit of a flexibility uh, again you you do see that we have a proposing a what technically would be a planned deficit of uh, approximately 80 some thousand dollars so not significant but with that we feel we'll, we'll co continue to remain within your targets that you have set as a board with the fund balance but then as you then begin planning for the next budget cycle it 
the one-time allocation gives you a little bit, we hope, a little bit of a room uh, to do your planning for the next cycle too. We believe those one-time allocations uh, that total, you know, in the 400 to $500,000 range are critical for us to continue moving forward in those areas that are allocated. But um, again, it does provide you um, that cushion a little bit. And I, and, I may, memory may not serve me correctly, but did we not last year also start out with a slight plan deficit and at the end of the year it, it all turned out okay? Correct. That's correct. It, and, and related to that is the fund balance. As you know, there is a range of uh, a goal, goal range of uh, fund balance, and uh, we ended the year at 22.9%, which is at the upper end. So that, that allows some additional, I guess, cushion uh, for future years. It's good, good trends. Uh, this part of the um, evening a, a meeting is um, for the certification of the tax levy. And before you is the motion um, that, that will, is being presented. It essentially asks for authority to levy up to the full amount allowed under the state imposed revenue limits as, as is necessary to support the district. Those numbers arrived, uh, came in favorably um, with a reduction uh, in the mill rate, uh, reduced to 11.35 this year. That's a reduction of 2.2%. I'm gonna go into a little more detail at where we arrived at that. That's about a $26 uh, decrease in uh, taxes per $100,000 of property value. Let me just present this as a comparison with the prior year and showing where the changes have occurred from the prior year to the current year. First of all, the revenue limit is increased by 2.8%, um, and that's a function of enrollment and the three-year average, as you had mentioned. Uh, the average in FTE. So their, their, their district continues to grow in enrollment. The source of funding for that revenue limit is there's, there's two components, the state equalized aid and the property tax levy. And the, the seesaw um, sketch there shows uh, the inverse relationship between the two. Uh, the equalized aid came in at 2.4%. Uh, with the difference being made up in property tax, which uh, comes in at 3.7%. The additional line that you see up there, which brings the total to 3.9%, is for the referendum debt. There was a slight increase in the um, debt payments that represents the amount of uh, increase in principal and interest on those uh, bond debts. The next slide repeats the uh, the bars for the equalized aid and the property tax uh, levy. And then it talks about how we get to the mill rate. Um, we had a surprise increase in the equalized value um, this year. It came in at 6.3%. We had estimated um, two and a quarter percent. And talking to um, area business managers, uh, many of the districts were um, surprised by the increase. And it, we've been looking for some some news as to exactly is that um, a, a function of you know, increased um, construction or if, it, if they're just going to appraise houses and homes higher. And it's probably a mixture of the both, as, as best we can tell. Um, as an example, um, La Crosse is up 3.1%. That was more than they expected. Sparta, 3.2%. On Alaska, 3.8%. West Salem at 5.2, and that was also higher than they expected. Uh, Toma, 5.7%, and then again, uh, Holman with 6.3%. So what that does with the property tax, if you think of the, um, this bar here being divided by this bar, that's what drove the mill rate down. So there was a very large increase, um, I think it was $80 million increase this year in the uh, property values, which dropped the mill rate by two and a quarter percent. This is also um, a trend chart of um, the home and equalized values. For the past five years prior to this one, the average uh, was 1.6%, and again, this year is 6.3, so kind of see uh, the changes prior to the uh, economic downturn and then more recently, so it's the, definitely trending upwards. So this um, puts the, those percentages I showed you in dollar figures. The, 
um, column there, column C, shows the dollar amount of increase to the revenue limit and the equalized aid amount. Next is the, if you subtract the equalized aid from the revenue limit, that um, what is remaining is the revenue limit portion of the tax levy. We add to that the revenue debt tax levy to arrive at the total tax levy, which again is about 3.9% divided by the equalized value of which increased by 6.3% uh, is a resulting mill rate of decrease of 2.2%. And then as stated before, that's a decrease in uh, taxes of $26 per $100,000 or 2.2%. And then these are all the, the numbers. And you can see the number that you'll be approving, asked to approve tonight is the total tax levy of 16,154,000. Any questions? Do we have any questions, board members? I think not. I mean, um, you weren't as sparkly as FFA, but your job is just as important. Well, thank and you. We appreciate all you've done and help us explain to, again, the three or four people who watch these films what is actually going on, but it's pretty much good news. It is. It it's is. It's a good trend, yes. Well, I thank you for your hard work. Um, I can't imagine how you do what you do. Okay. Thank you. And again, this is part of your consent agenda this evening. Yes. All right. With that said, that's what we'll move on to is consent agenda. For the consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background materials on each item or we've discussed these at previous meetings. These will be acted upon with one vote without discussion. Unless a board member wants to discuss a single item, it'll be pulled out of the consent agenda and will be voted on separately. So with that said, are there any items that any of our members would like to be pulled out? All right, I would then entertain a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Gary, thank you. Is that you, Lisa? Yeah. All right. Are there, are there any discussion items you want to bring up? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you for your patience with me tonight, by the way. <laughs> um, we'll move on to board member report discussion. I will call upon board members in the order of the roll call. I'd ask you to present any comments or committee reports that you have. And Mr. Benneker. Oh. I am Again probably going to shock everyone and have no comments this evening. Wow. I might that do the same. Happens. Wouldn't that be a red letter day? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Lisa Collins. I have nothing to report. All right. Gary Dunlap. I uh, remind everybody to get out and vote here. We have a big election coming up soon. And I'm surprised Tim didn't remind us that we can start the calendar over again for football countdown to when football is going to start again. He must football. have a fever or something. Yeah. Hey, we, we heard the winter uh, code meeting was tonight, so that's exciting. Yeah, it's nice winter sports are starting up. And Fall sports are still underway. Sorry. But the only bad there. thing is that See, means you had something cold. to say after all, didn't you? No, don't be sorry. It's all, it's all good. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Gary. Tom Cruise. No, nothing. I just enjoy the meeting, and uh, the F FFA was really pretty cool. It was pretty cool. No, we have pride for so many reasons, don't we? Yes. Um, Mr. Alex, thank you for the treats, by the way. You want to talk about those? That's awesome. Those came. Are those from you? Oh. Or who are these from? <laughs> he should have said this yes. Look presented. at Alex. He's like, no, I didn't bring you This treats. was presented at the last I, um... Oh, and I was not at the last board meeting. You should take credit for that stuff. Alex, you could take credit yeah. and say, well, I'd like <laughs> well, to. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It took a long time to yeah. 
Oh. Come up with all the little puns that had Could to go into the notes. Could you please thank all your people that helped with this then? They, the FFA and others, you know, <laughs> really got on board with it. I love it. Not a Seriously, huge big Mr. Fan, Alex. But... Talk to us about students. What do you want to say? What's going on? Um, well, again, the FFA presentation was very good, and they they do a lot in our school, but they work very hard to get the money so they can do those things. Um, she touched on that br very briefly, but you know, sometimes during concessions in the fall, we're here 22 hours purely working at the concession stand. Um, the treasurer, I would say, is the hardest working member of that. Who is that? That's me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We love you for so many reasons. Oh. Um, Talk to us about this treasurer. What does he do? Well, I'm here 21 hours a week working at the concession stand, and um, as fall sports are kicking <laughs> off, so we had a little break in between, but you know, winter sports are beginning, so we'll be back again working at the concession stand. And it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work, but it helps pay for projects and fun things like this. So I they're... A really, they're an underrated organization. They really are. Um, they never get enough praise, and Mr. King is probably one of the best in his field. I know he, arguably, he wrote the organic farming curriculum for southwestern Wisconsin. Yep. He did work for, with uh, Organic Valley. He wrote the curriculum for them, and they distribute it, so we have him. Um, but yeah, but I think... DECA, and we have a lot of good organizations in our school, but I'm partial to the FFA. Um, nothing new for the students to speak of, um, just after homecoming, so we're kind of coming down after the loss on Friday, but we'll get over it. <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> um, I'm really appreciative, with all joking aside, um, it needs to be said, and we say that when we have our volunteers that come up here that donate money to mm -hmm. our district. We have no idea, I don't think, the citizenship as a whole, unless there are parents involved. But it needs to be said that students, faculty, parents, friends of the district put in so many hours, so many untold hours to make this district what it is. And it's, it's like every school district yes. across the country. And so I'm glad you brought that up, and I, I do want to address it seriously. <laughs> um, uh, thank you for what you do, and please make sure that every student volunteer that you meet knows that your board is appreciative of that, and our teachers at admin. We couldn't do what we do without volunteering, without people that do what they do for no money. They do it for love. I think they enjoy it, and the moment you don't enjoy it, that's when you stop doing it. Yeah. And you know, it's. I think it'd be very easy to, you know, if you wanted to leave at 2:45, you could leave at 2:45. But I'm proud to say the majority of our teachers stay, you know, 3:30, 3:45, helping students and excelling our community. Those words make me proud. Thank you, Alex. Um, Cheryl is gone. Anita is gone. I don't have anything to report except that um, SALC we are continuing to look at class size it's going to be a long process we're taking it slow we're taking it easy we might have a subcommittee um, probably we will we want to get input from our administrators our teachers um, so we're moving along on that so that's all I have with that. Ms. Dr. Carlson is helping me, bear with me. So down to here, right? Sure. All right, so I'm moving to school board committee written reports. Finance notes, do I just? They're just in there for me. They're just in my folder, all right. Um, board meeting schedule, I can announce what the next meetings are. We have November 10th coming up. We also have board members, please save the date, a workshop on November 19th with um, Matthew Fail, 
same place, prayer view. We hope you can all attend. It's so important that we do that. Then another board meeting on November 24th. Um, board policy rule review, Dr. Carlson. In your board packet, you have um, about five policies and or administrative rules for your review as a board. Again, this is your opportunity as a board to look at more of that philosophical review, that statement, and provide any direction to those committees. So this evening, uh, the, the list includes a couple of policies or administrative rules for buildings and grounds, as well as finance. And so those board members that chair or serve on those committees uh, would, would appreciate any thoughts that the board as a whole has regarding those five. Thank you. Um, moving on to board member recognition. I feel kind of funny saying that because Dr. Carlson told me that was me. So I think I'm getting recognized. This is going to be a red letter day for me, right? Cool. Okay. Hopefully I'm still on here with the mic. I'm going to ask Kate Mayor to come around front. And tonight it's a privilege. I This... Um, I think it was planned at the last board meeting and Ms. Mayor was absent and also this this is an award that is presented to board members uh, across the state by our Wisconsin Association of School Boards which our board is a member of and so at the regional at the fall regional meetings is the opportunity for WASB to present the member level awards which members earn these levels by uh, contributions they make primarily through time and, and additional duties and responsibilities both at the region level and at the state level and so this evening I'm going to take the opportunity on behalf of the board and and our school district to present Ms. Mayor the level one and again um, for a you're not I think you <laughs> refer to yourself often still as a newbie but you're not but actually, in less than three years, to achieve this level, it takes a, quite a bit to do that. And so I'm just going to open it up. <coughs> to it's got a gold badge. <laughs> it just is certificate of achievement from the Wisconsin Association of School Boards an award level one to Kate Mayer for commitment to children through continuous participation in WASB programs and activities. And again, this was the regional meeting was held on September 23rd in Viroqua, and I know Kate was unable to attend that evening. There is a pin also that goes along with it that you can proudly wear. So congratulations. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Thank you. I love my work on WASB and all the workshops I go to. It's a good thing for me to do with my time. My husband would agree. Uh, <laughs> we are at the point of board reflection. So we're looking at our norms. How did we do today? Did we treat each other well? Did we listen? Did we follow our rules? Any comments? You know what you're thinking, Lisa? Did we do okay today? Did a fine job. We did okay? Fine job. Tim? Very nice. Snotting. All right. With that said, I don't think I bid Anita's record for the shortest meeting, but it's a pretty timely thing. So, is there any other business that needs to come before the board at this time? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I moved. I Thank second. you. I second it. Lisa, and second is Tom. Motion, um, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. no. 
No. <laughs> I'm not listening to the no's. <laughs> then be it resolved that the Board of Education has adjourned, and it is 8.01. Thank you to all of you who came.